Are you trying to gain muscle while you lose fat? Can they both be done at the same time? Or do you have to lose all the fat and then build up the muscle? Like, What is the best way to do it and how do you go about doing it? Well, that's what we're talking about in today's episode. So strap in and get ready for episode 092. Let's go. I've always been that skinny guy. Why can't I gain muscle mass? What do I do in the gym? They said I'd always be skinny. This is your complete source for how to gain lean muscle and break out of your skinny body. From nutrition to getting the most out of your workouts and everything in between. We know just how frustrating gaining muscle mass can be. But don't worry, we've got you covered. You're listening to the Bones to Bulk podcast. Hello, hello, welcome to today's episode. My name is Brian Parody, and I will be your host today. And before we dive into today's episode, if you have not been over to bonestobulk.com, we just launched a brand new product line. We have t-shirts, tanks, hoodies, hats, all of your favorite workout gear available representing the Bones to Bulk brands. And I would greatly appreciate it if you went over there and just checked it out. So head on over to bonestobulk.com, click the gear button. All right, so you want to lose fat and gain muscle. How do you do both? Well, for starters, let's kind of break down how you build muscle. Muscle is built by breaking down your muscle fibers through lifting weights or doing heavy exertion with your muscles. And basically, in the healing process, these tiny little tears that you create heal scabs are formed over them and then well it's new muscle fiber it's not technically a scab but it's like a scab and then your muscle grows and becomes more dense and that's literally how our muscle grows so weightlifting yes you have to be doing either and it doesn't have to be weights i'm not saying if you're starting off you can do a lot just with body weight but the point is like weightlifting is how you build muscle now doing that regularly and trying to lose fat is definitely doable but it takes some tweaking and it takes doing the right kinds of workouts. It takes the right kind of first and foremost nutrition because even though you're wanting to gain muscle and lose fat, you're going to have to lose overall weight. Like you can't build more muscle and lose fat and gain weight and it all be muscle. Like that's, it doesn't happen. So you've got to go in a calorie deficit. Now, depending on how much weight you have to lose is going to depend on how much of a deficit or how much you need to lose or how long the process is going to take. So let's say you want to drop 15 pounds and you want to gain muscle at the same time. I would recommend going in a slight caloric deficit. Now, what that means is you're going to burn more than you consume in a day. So let's just... I don't have every, everybody's different. And if you've never gone online, go online, do a calorie calculator and kind of get a baseline for how much you should be eating. But let's say you wanted to lose 15 pounds and your recommended daily calorie intake is 2,500. So you want to, let's say, aim to lose one to one and a half pounds per week. To do that, you need to be eating at least 3,500 less calories than what you're consuming for the entire week. So that's 500 a day. So instead of eating 2,500, you're going to eat 2,000 a day while lifting. Now, I know that if you're tracking this stuff like with a Fitbit or Garmin or whatever, that it's going to fluctuate how many calories you can have in based on your workout don't go by that stick with your number and that's the number of calories you stick to so in other words if you go run for 30 minutes and burn an extra 500 calories don't think that you can then go eat 500 more calories and you're probably not going to burn 500 calories in 30 minutes running so you want to really hone in your nutrition side of things because you're not going to lose fat regardless of how much you lift weights if you're not eating in a deficit. So that is one thing you've got to get under control. So again, I would start off aim for 500 less a day, which is going to equate to one pound a week. So in a month, that's four pounds. So we're talking four months here to hit your goal. That's that's awesome if it's 15 pounds. Now, typically we think, well, you need to be doing cardio if you want to lose weight. Well, not necessarily. First off, Weightlifting is way better at burning more calories and dropping off weight overall than cardio is. Just it, it is. You're obviously wanting to build muscle, so you better be lifting anyway. But do you do cardio? I would recommend doing some steady state cardio. Now, steady state cardio is 
kind of a slower paced cardio. So in other words, rather than jumping on a treadmill and running for 20 minutes, I'm gonna maybe put the treadmill on a slight incline and just walk for 15 or 20 minutes. Or maybe I'm gonna get on the bike, keep it at a very low pace and bike for 15 to 20 minutes. And the reason for this is because when we go into a steady state cardio, our body taps into our fat stores first as an energy source. Whereas if you jump on the treadmill and just break out in a run, your body is going to burn through your carbohydrate source first as fuel because it's it's a faster burning um, fuel for and it's just going to go to that resource first. So you don't want to burn up your carbs, you want to burn up the fat. So that's why you're going to do steady state cardio. So do your weight routine and then at the end of that, tack on 15 to 20 minutes of steady state cardio. It doesn't even have to be at the same time. Maybe on your lunch break, you can go outside and walk around while you eat your lunch and and get it in that way. Like at some point though, just get in that steady state cardio. Another thing that's gonna benefit you a lot is if you work a job where you sit down for most of the day, like you sit at a desk or whatnot, get up once an hour. Even if you just go to the bathroom, go fill up your water bottle, like whatever it is, get up, stretch, and go do that. Because just moving for a few minutes each hour has huge benefits on your metabolism and just your overall health. The second thing is standing actually burns more calories than sitting. So if you have the option to do a stand-up desk, then try that out. So little things can go far when you're just trying to make small changes. For instance, dropping 15 pounds and gaining muscle. So you're going to continue to do this method. You're going to continue to to lift weights. You're going to continue to do some steady state cardio and eat in a caloric deficit. And that is literally, quite literally, how you are going to burn fat and gain muscle at the same time. Now, let's say your goal was to lose 15 pounds, okay? It's going to get a little skewed over a longer period of time because You may just be looking at the scale and thinking, okay, like maybe the first month you lose four pounds and maybe the second month you lose three and then the third month you don't really lose any, you just stay the same. That doesn't mean you stopped making progress because as you build muscle, your weight fluctuation may change. So you may be still burning fat and increasing your muscle, but your weight may not be changing because the muscle you're building is counteracting against the fat you're burning. So your actual number on the scale may not change, and that's okay. So that's why it's super important not just to go by the scale. I highly recommend take before pictures, like take before pictures. Have somebody take them, set your phone up, whatever. Take them of the front, the side, the back. Take as many as you can. And then after two months, take the same pictures and do it kind of in the same lighting and everything so everything looks the same. But just doing this and measuring, like grab a little measuring tape and Measure your your waist, measure your arms, because I guarantee you, even if the number on the scale doesn't change exactly how you are expecting it to, those other numbers are going to change because you're transitioning your body from one that has an excess of fat to one that has a much less excess of fat but has more muscle. And so just going off the scale and saying, well, I dropped five pounds and then I'm up two and then I dropped three and then I'm up one. Like we can be so dictated by the scale that we forget the whole building muscle, losing fat process. So do not just go by the scale. For a long time, I lived my life so driven by the scale. I have to be this number. I have to be this number because I came from a place where I was such a low number that I feared ever even getting remotely close to that number again, which I haven't, but it's just like this fear in my mind. And I honestly probably haven't stepped on a scale in three, four months. Like, I don't even know. So you've got to get to that point where you're you're taking pictures, you're measuring yourself, and you're judging how your clothes fit. And all that is really going to play more of a role in are you hitting your goals than the number on the scale when you're trying to lose a smaller amount of weight. And when I say smaller, like 15 to 25 pounds, when you're trying to lose that amount of weight um, and gain muscle at the same time. So you can't just go off that. But you definitely can do both. You should do both if that's your goal and it's possible. All right, thank you so much for listening. If you get anything out of this podcast, please, please take just a minute out of your day. Go leave us a review on iTunes. Leave us a rating. I would greatly appreciate it because it helps boost our reach on iTunes, basically, and I just would greatly appreciate that. With that being said, remember, no matter what anybody's told you, what walls you've hit, you can accomplish any single fitness goal. You've got this. (laughs) 